Hello everyone, Pahamar here with the next episode of my Let's Mod series. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about what you should know first in concept design. When it comes to modding, especially for the first time, there are a number of things you need to keep in mind. Today, I hope to go over several of them. The very first thing you should keep in mind is learn Java first. Having a solid understanding of how to do things in Java is crucial to having a good modding experience. In this series, I will not be teaching you how to program with Java. If something I am covering seems confusing or hard from a Java point of view, please take some time and research or Google what I'm doing. Otherwise, future episodes will seem harder to understand. Trying to learn how to program in Java while also trying to learn how to make mods for Minecraft can be incredibly frustrating. It's hard to know if the error you are seeing is because you did something wrong in Java, or if it's something related to Minecraft. You don't need advanced Java knowledge, just aim for being comfortable with intermediate concepts. Take the time, learn Java. You will thank yourself later. Some good Java resources available online are The New Boston, The Oracle Java Trails, and there's a book by Joshua Block, Effective Java 2nd Edition, comes highly recommended and can be found on Amazon.com. The next thing you need to keep in mind is don't expect success the very first time. Just like everything, it takes practice and trying things out to get better at modding. Don't be afraid to ask questions. However, don't expect people to solve every problem for you. You won't learn anything this way. The more advanced the concept you're trying, the more time it'll take to learn it. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's normal, and as cliche as it sounds, modding is more of a journey than a destination. I've spent hours working on different implementations of things and trying to find the proper solution to a problem. I've thrown out my work dozens of times, and in the end, you will come to a solution. And that journey from where you started to where you ended up is actually what will teach you how to properly do things. The next thing you'll want to keep in mind is that you will want to think like a programmer. Programmers tend to look at things very logically and break complex problems down to manageable smaller chunks. The vast majority of the time, big problems can be broken into smaller problems, which can then be broken down into even smaller problems, until you have ones that you can easily solve. This isn't something that comes naturally to everyone, however. While anyone can write code, not everyone is cut out to write good code. But then what is good code? Basically, good code is code that works, it's simple, it solves exactly what it should, it's elegant, it's not needlessly complex, it's easy and clear to understand, it's easy to change, and it is verifiable. You can test it to make sure it works. Good code drastically improves the ease in which you can make changes and maintain your code in the future. Just because you're good at design, or experienced with programming in Java or other languages, or have lots of people on your team, that doesn't mean you will produce good code. Try to keep the principles of good code in mind while you are developing your mod. Being familiar with some of the principles of computer science is very helpful for writing good code in your mod. Some good resources for learning computer science are Computer Science in Overview Introduction to Algorithms An Introduction to Computer Science Programming Methodology The last one there is an online free course available from Stanford that you'll find a link in the video description below. These resources are a recommendation only. They are definitely not required for making a Minecraft mod, but they can definitely help you in being a better programmer. And a disclaimer, I am a computer science graduate. The next thing you'll want to keep in mind is you will want to be familiar with the Mojang Terms of Service for Minecraft. The Mojang Terms of Service for Minecraft lay out what you can and cannot do as a modder. It also lays out what belongs to you and what belongs to Mojang. You can find it online at minecraft.net slash terms. Read it. For now, what is important to know is don't release the source code for Minecraft. That's bad. And don't sell your mod. However, releasing your mod on websites with advertising on it does not count as selling. Don't be afraid to start small. Just like learning to crawl before you run, you want to learn the basics before jumping into development of the next big mod. Biting off more than you can chew is one of the biggest causes for developer burnout and abandoned projects. You don't want to experience developer burnout. It, it's bad. Be prepared to spend some time on this. The more complex the mod you want to make, the more time it will take to make it. Doing things right takes time, but it makes it easier to maintain and sustain long term. 
Doing things fast often means doing things suboptimally, and it is very difficult to maintain or sustain this long term. Don't be discouraged if you feel like you're progressing slowly. It happens to all of us. That's why it's very important to make something that you would play. No, really, I'm being serious. If you don't enjoy what you're making, then why are you making it? You need to enjoy what you are making. It will give you the drive you need to get through the harder and more frustrating points of developing a mod. This enjoyment and desire to play with what you are making are what you will need to fall back on when you feel discouraged. Don't make something to impress someone. Unless it's for a job, then totally do that. For example, if you're making a mod for a school project, job application, or to learn as a hobby, that's awesome. But if you're making it to try and get on a server or to fit in with a certain group, then you really aren't embracing the idea of mod development. The next very important thing that you're going to want to think of is you're going to want to know your audience. Are you making this mod for yourself, for a particular group of people, or are you just making it for the modding community in general? What kind of features and mechanics are they looking for? What would they enjoy? Knowing your audience is important to succeeding at your design goals. Don't mimic, be inspired. So you're really liking what ModX has done, and you want to do something similar. Ask yourself, can you do what they did but better? It is better to be inspired and use that inspiration to make something new or better than it is to just plain out mimic it. It will push you technically and creatively, and everyone wins. For example, let's think of the mod Compact Solars. Compact Solars is a Minecraft mod specifically designed to work with another Minecraft mod, Industrial Craft 2. What was the author of Compact Solars thinking before they started development? Was it something like, I like solar power. Who has done that idea before? How did they do it? What problems does their way have? How can I do it better or differently? Can I make it better and have it still be compatible with their way? This approach means that you can learn something and make something truly unique and beneficial at the same time. Write your ideas down. Writing ideas down makes them concrete. Don't be technical. Write them down like you would explain them to your mother or a small child. You can easily get lost in implementation deals otherwise. Just keep it simple. Organize your ideas into chunks. Just like how programmers break big problems into smaller ones, break big ideas into smaller ones. This way, you can cover everything possible for your ideas and you have something to reference later. Example, let's say I'm making a magic mod. I say to myself, I want to make a magic mod. Well, what does it do? Well, it adds magic. How does it add magic? What does the magic do? What items will it have? Well, there's going to be item A. What will it do? How will it do it? How will the player get it? What unique mechanics will it have? Spells. Okay, what spells? What makes them unique? Keep doing this exercise until you can't write anything else down. At the end of it, you'll have a rough draft of your mod and a basic understanding of what your design goals are going to be. It's okay to come back later, though, and revise it with new ideas or with new information that you've learned over the course of your development. Decide if compatibility is important. Do you want your mod to be compatible with other mods? If so, how compatible do you want it to be? Do you just want your mod to play nicely beside other mods, or do you want it to interact with them as well? Depending on how compatible you want to be, it will affect how you go about developing your mod. If you don't care about compatibility, then it does not affect you at all. If you do care, but you are only wanting your mod to work nicely side by side with other mods, just don't modify vanilla Minecraft classes, called base edits. If you're using Minecraft Forge, this is handled for you, and you are automatically compatible with every other Minecraft Forge mod out there. If you want to interact with other mods, then you will need to investigate what you need to do in order to accomplish what you want. Common things to look at are APIs for the other mods, documentation, whether they're open source, etc. Really what you're looking to do is you're trying to find out how they do things and how you can complement that. How compatible you want to be will influence how you make your mod. Review your compatibility goals often to make sure you are accomplishing them during your development. Don't be afraid to experiment. Experimenting with your ideas and code is a great way to innovate and learn new things. Try adding something, changing something, see what happens. Just don't be surprised if things break, they often will. Learn from failures, learn to fix them, and see what you missed or what needs more tweaking. The vanilla Minecraft code is a great place to learn. You can see how all the features of Minecraft work, and I'll be honest with you, even the most seasoned and experienced Minecraft modder still refers to the vanilla code quite frequently. 
don't be discouraged by the community. As much as you try, you are not likely to make everyone happy. Some people will love it, some people will hate it. This will change over time, and the longer your mod has been around, the more it will change. The important thing is don't let this get to you. This is why it's so important to make something that you would play and that you would enjoy. Take their criticisms in stride. You may find new ideas, or you might find fixes or changes, or something that could add to your mod. There may very well be valid reasons for you to change something, or not to implement something. Take their praise with humility as well. Understand that either way, if they are willing to comment, then they at some level care about what you've done. The next very important thing for you to know is to know where to go for help. Every developer gets stumped at some point. The important thing is to know where to go to get extra help. There are many excellent resources out there. There are Java tutorial websites, modding tutorial websites, communities of developers, etc. Some of my favorites are uh, IRC. I'm particularly fond of the Minecraft Forge channel on Esper.net. I find there's a lot of very helpful people in there. Uh, there's a lot of different experience levels in there from novice all the way to expert. Good spot to be. Just be patient though. When you ask a question, if someone doesn't answer right away, chances are they're either busy or they don't know the answer to the question. The website minecraftforge.net has some excellent tutorials as well inside of their wiki, and Minecraft Forums has a subforum specifically for mod development. So now, where do we go from here? If you're unfamiliar or rusty with Java, please take some time and visit some websites to learn Java. Check out what other Minecraft mod development tutorials there are out there. Familiarize yourself with the Minecraft Terms of Service and write down your ideas. Some of the resources discussed during this video were for Java, the new Boston, the Oracle Java Trails, and Effective Java 2nd Edition. For Computer Science, Introduction to Computer Science Programming Methodology, once again this is a free online course from Stanford, Computer Science in Overview, and Introduction to Algorithms. I hope you found this episode helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode, Helpful Tools and Setting Up Your Development Environment. As always, please follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe to my YouTube, and visit me online at www.pahamar.com.